Well, back to one of our top stories now. Flubber's mother is speaking out about the star's relationship with his girlfriend, Cindy Sierra Mangale. I'm joined in studio by reporter Karen Moore, and she spoke to Flubber's family, various members of his family, in a series of exclusive interviews. Karen, thank you very much for your time this morning. Um, we've heard from uh, Flubber's, uh, would we call it, estranged wife, and then now this morning we're running clips from your interview with his mother. Just how is the family dealing with this? Because it seems like they were close to his girlfriend who's been accused of uh, his murder and who's been accused of stabbing him. So how are they sort of wrapping their minds around this from what you can see? It's very apparent to me that they're still processing what happened. And I think there's, this is a very interesting scenario in which when someone pleads self-defense, which, which uh, the girlfriend Cindy Siwe Mangrela is doing, um, there's a kind of pl implied guilt on the part of the deceased person mm -hmm. um, that he was somehow abusive, uh, brutally attacked um, this young woman. Um, she's produced medical evidence, or claims a medical report saying that she had certain bruising um, itself, which is ambiguous. There's not clear-cut um, consensus on those reports. But they're now, I think, dealing with this issue where they love this man. They, they clearly, has, I spoke to his 12-year-old daughter as well. Um, there's, major, you know, there's a huge amount of love, but they're also dealing with this public speculation that he could have been an abusive partner. I mean, what has become apparent with these text messages is that he was a philanderer. He was unfaithful on at least two different occasions that I could pick up in the, in the investigation for this program. And that this relationship, though everyone that I've spoken to said there was a lot of love between this, these two, was utterly toxic, defined by possessiveness, defined by infidelity and mistrust. And I think that's what comes out in the story. Um, well, when we say what we can pick up, I mean, we can't sort of say that for fact, though. I mean, it's just based on what we're seeing in, in this sort of uh, exchange that we're seeing on WhatsApp. So all of this obviously having to go to court still. Everything that, that, that we've seen in this, what part do you think this is going to play? Will, the, will stuff like this be admissible in court? I think it might be. I mean, what's interesting with the Oscar Pistorius case was those WhatsApp messages between Oscar Pistorius and Reva Steenkamp were ultimately thrown out by the court. Um, this case really is going to be about the minutes before this young woman stabbed Flubber. What made her believe in those moments that her life was in imminent danger and she had no alternative but to stab him? And it'll be the minutia of the case, Yveka. It'll be what did he say? What did he do? What was he reaching for? Also, where did you get the knife? The knife, you know, the, the location of the knife, whether it was in the kitchen, whether it was in the bedroom, how exactly that knife was obtained and taken to the bedroom where Flubber was ultimately killed. That is going to be a crucial detail. And yet we heard from a woman who spent a, a lot of her adult life with him. We heard from his estranged wife, somebody who probably might have had reason one would think ordinarily to, to, to be angry with him and then say things about him that, that would sort of blight his character. But she's had nothing but wonderful things to say about him, saying he, there's no way he was abusive. In the almost 20 years that they've known each other, she's had no experience where she might have wanted to take a knife to him as well. Not, uh, never once even said, call him a cheater. And then you have somebody who's been in a relationship with him for, well, comparably a short time. Well, in that, um, in that text message, um, the WhatsApp message, this young woman, Mangrela, actually says to him, I shouldn't be surprised that you're two-timing me because I started my relationship when you cheated on Lesejo's mom, who's in Paul mm. Haberi. And I mean, I had to have a heartfelt conversation with her before this program aired and said, you know, I want you to know what's in this text message. And she kind of just didn't react. There was kind of a pause there. But it's very apparent that she loved him mm. very much. And I think the key for that family is, while he may have gotten up to, you know, certain activities that are not desirable in a relationship, desirable in a marriage, for all of them, consistently they say he wasn't violent. His brother even said to me, there's two people that are violent in this family and it's me and my brother. Our brother, Flubber, would say, no guys, stop it, stop it, stop it. His daughter says that, his yeah. mother says that. It may be a scenario where people would look at that cynically and say, well, they're all trying to defend the indefensible here. Yeah. But in a scenario where the medical reports aren't conclusive about her injuries, you know, I think this is going to be an absolutely fascinating case because it's really going to come down to those forensic details and it's actually going to come down to how well the accused fares when she has to testify in her own defense. How's his daughter dealing with this and what does she have to say? I mean, was she close to the girlfriend? She was very close. She actually described her in the interview as uh, my best friend. 
and she's 12. she's 12 and she spent a lot of time with the girlfriend um, actually said that she you know the girlfriend often told her that she she loved her and you know she's an incredibly articulate bright 12 year old girl who clearly loved her father very much told me that her father wouldn't even let her mother slap her on the wrist she said my father wouldn't let anyone touch mm -hmm. me um, and you know we took her to go and see the video for for one of the flubber remixes being yeah. filmed and just seeing her in the room like watching these her, her father's brothers watching his fellow band members mouthing the words to the raps that he can now long, longer yeah. sing whatever you make of that case that young woman's reality at that moment was incredibly moving yeah we can hear more about that at Checkpoint. That's at 9.30 tonight. That's all the interviews that Karen has done with uh, Flubber's family. You can catch on Checkpoint. That's at 9.30 tonight. Thank you very much, Karen, for your time.